everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Brittany Bond and my amazing friend Tamara. What I- What is your last name, Tamara? Klemic. Klemic. Um, I'm going to speak like that. Okay. Oh, wait. It's not. It wasn't on. So I'm Tamara Klemic. Yes. <laughs> Um, we are sitting on my balcony in Copenhagen. Tamara is one of my very best friends here on the island, and I'm very grateful mm-hmm. that I get to see her sometimes on the daily. <laughs> um, and I really want to go into this podcast and like share some really deep stuff. So I'm going to summarize a little bit about who you are, and then please speak up if I'm, I'm probably going to miss a lot of things. <laughs> or if there's anything you want to be more represented in, let sure. me know. Mm-hmm. Um, so from what I know about you, you were, you're from Australia and you worked in corporate for 15 years in advertising mm-hmm. and then about six years ago you were like, fuck this, like I, don't, I cannot do this anymore and um, went on a spiritual journey uh, which took many paths and um, <coughs> I would love to hear more about like what you facilitate now and all this stuff but a lot of it was around like sexuality right this is also why i love our i have a lot of women here on the island are very in their power sexually and we're also leading a lot of stuff around this this is great Mm. um and now you are co-running uh something here on the island called the jade temple Mm -hmm. which is a sisters it's it's made by sisters like women on the island and for many years it was only for women but now you've opened it up to also doing some events for men but it's like primarily women focused and like what women need right yeah do you want to speak any to anything i just said you please (laughs) speak into any of that (laughs) uh where to start so i will just finish on the jade temple just since we're we're there now um yeah it's a it's a women's community it's a sisterhood Mm -hmm. where we come together to feel safe with each other, to feel safe within our own bodies, to connect to our female bodies in a way that can unlock the wisdom and pleasure that's in our female bodies, which so many of us get taught to shut off from. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have a little, we, we, we also offer it to, as a space for other people to use. So men are welcome in the space in that Mm -hmm. sense, but it's a, it's a women's, it's a sisterhood. So like the mission is getting the sisters together, connected to each other, connected to their bodies and helping them to step into their full power. The so power. That, yeah. They yeah. Can sexual power, also just life power, life force energy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also pleasure, right? Like huge stuff around f- female embodiment and pleasure. Totally. Yeah, and I, I mean, I like to say that we're born in these pleasure suits, <laughs> these human bodies, like it's actually a full pleasure suit Mm -hmm. all of the senses and everything that exists and um yeah pleasure is a path that we can choose that means that we make different choices in life that we Mm. live more authentically that we're choosing things that feel soft in our bodies that feel good in our bodies Mm. um not just sexual pleasure but pleasure in in the way that we move through the world and um it's also very healing. Like pleasure is good for our nervous systems. Like pleasure in and of itself actually tells signals to the nervous system, you know, that we are safe and that when we're in a safe space, we actually feel more pleasure. So it's like really this like mm. beautiful loop of creating safety. And when we feel more safe, we feel more pleasure. And when we're experiencing more pleasure, we feel more safe. So I love that. <laughs> yeah. I am all for that. Yeah. Safety and pleasure. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, so that's who you are in general. Is there anything that you feel... Okay, I'm going to I'll ask you a question. Like, I just love you. I just want to say that to everyone. I love you so much. Yay. I feel like our growth as friendship... Um, I was sp- speaking to Faraday about this the other day because he's like, um, did, were you always super close with Samara? And I was like, you know, we've always had a lot of respect for each other in mm-hmm. the past and like what we were doing on the island... But I feel like within the last year or year and a half, we've really come together as like soul family and Mm -hmm. sisters and, you know, showing up for each other. Like when we're sick or some stuff's going down, like, do we, do you need something? I'm here. I'm with you. I feel you. And I feel that this is, I'm just really grateful for that. Mm. I guess I want to say that. Mm. And, um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, me too. Because, I, I, you know, we do this big work in the world. And then at the end of the day, it's like, 
the thing for me that really matters is that we do it together you know like I can come back and like tell you about what happened you know and like like we are each other's internal reality bubble of safety and Mm -hmm. then like when we talk about building the soul tribe like this is for me you are one of my soul family like I have you in my phone as like tomorrow family Mm. (coughs) and um I really encourage all everyone who's listening and everyone who and everyone I talk to, I'm always like, you need to build your core soul family. This can be your physical family or it can be people that you have chosen, you know. And for a lot of us who are travelers, um, we love our physical family, but, you know, maybe we're d- we don't see them that often. So, like, you need to have these people in your life that feel like family um, and that you can tap into. How was that experience for you here on the island? Yeah, I really obviously resonate with what you're saying. I am... Um I think that this island, it has a lot of people that are living I here. I want you to be able to hear yourself for a minute. Okay. Just to regulate the voice. Cool. Hmm. Whee! Yeah, it's interesting to hear yourself mm-hmm. through this at the same time. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, so... Yeah. Sorry. The, the, for anyone who's listening on Spotify, um, the camera just fell over, so <laughs> I was fixing that for a second. Um, yeah. How was your experience building the soul family for yourself here on the island? Yeah, it's been definitely a journey for me. I think there's a lot of people that have either been here long term, and then there's a lot of people that come and go. Um, but actually, I chose one word for this year, 2023, and it was tribe. Mm, and I, I really that. feel like at the beginning of the year, I was like, I have lots of friends, but I feel like I haven't got the like really grounded, anchored depths of friendship that like I feel I desire and I need in my life. And it's beautiful that we're now right near the end of the year and I feel fully, fully mm. in the world of having my, my chosen family, my soul family, my tribe, mm. my sisters. Yeah, I feel very, very supported now. And yeah, it's such an important part for um us to feel safe on the planet and to feel loved and to not also put all of that into one person when we're in relationship yeah you know yeah i think we talk about this a lot Mm -hmm. about how like we are not meant to have partnership like relationships in silos where you know like I only tell my boyfriend or husband or whatever everything that's happening it's like we're meant to have a whole community Mm -hmm. supporting us Mm -hmm. and I really see us doing that with each other where it's like, okay, this is going, I'll, I'll come and tell you, this is going on with me in Faraday. And I love your reflections, you know, I love your stories and support and just beingness, you know, mm. it's like, even if uh, someone said something to me one time, it's like, it doesn't matter if you're in the void of like the unknown, as long as you're in it together, mm. because then, you know, you're going to get through, you know, it's like. I feel like so many people go through their life and they're just alone in like their emotional reality Mm -hmm. and like they don't have people to lean on and they maybe don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. And that makes me so sad Mm -hmm. because then you're constantly people pleasing because you just really want the connection instead of being able to just drop in and be like, yeah, I might have made a mistake there or yeah, this is not my best day, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. and I'm still loved and supported by the people around me. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and what this conversation brings up in me um, is my previous relationship, my marriage, um, and the fact that we were traveling around the world and I had like left my previous life and living in London and in the corporate world. And so then I was making all these new friends in this new way of being and then we would be moving on and moving to another place and another place and and that really did put so much pressure on Mm -hmm. the relationship on him like uh, he was fulfilling so many of those roles and so many of those needs so yeah it's um yeah i think whether we're we're, if we're solo and we're not in a relationship it's so important and then when we are in relationship it's sometimes even more important you know i think it is even more important (laughs) because like when you're in a relationship you're having someone directly mirroring all your trauma (laughs) so you're kind of like all your shit's coming (laughs) up it's nice to be reminded that there's lots of people that love you exactly as you are (laughs) yes which is like i think this is the thing is like we're meant to grow our consciousness on the timeline like in our lives we're here to grow and that's great. So it's, that's also why it's great to be in partnership and like have those reflections because like, yeah, you're growing. Things are coming up. Your trauma is coming up so it can be healed. But 
trauma also can happen when things happen too fast. It's too much too fast, you mm -hmm. know? And so even when you're in partnership and it could be like, even in a healthy way, bringing up stuff so that it could be healed. If you don't have the support, your nervous system might get overwhelmed and just shut down or re-traumatize yourself. Like I've had so many partnerships where I just kept going, even though I was already overwhelmed and I didn't have anyone to talk to mm -hmm. about it, you know, and I thought, and I could intellectually understand, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, hitting a trauma point or I want to be, this is who I want to be in the relationship. But emotionally I wasn't supported enough or resourced enough to show up in the way that I wanted. And all it takes is like, you know, a friend telling you, you're doing great, keep going. Or like, I feel you or like, here's a different reflection, you know, there's so many times I want to like hug the younger versions of myself and just tell her like, you did a good job. You mm -hmm. know, you did the best you could with what you had. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to hear like your vision for um, like women in the world. I think this is really powerful. Like if the mm -hmm. work that you're doing, what is, if you could have the impact that you wanted to in the world with you and also in co collaboration with the people that you love, mm -hmm. uh, what would what would the shift be? I know that's a really big question. Mm. No, it's. I mean, it's. I talk about it all day, every day. So okay. <laughs> it's big, and it's. It's yeah, also. Yeah. This is what. This is my jam. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're here for. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like really, really at the core and at the essence, I believe like women connected to their power, to it, which is their bodies, and being able to listen and honor their bodies. Women are the ones that are going to change the world. Mm -hmm. That are going to be able to bring us back to harmony and to caring for the earth and to care for each other and live in a way that's not um, every man for himself and living separately and com competition and competing, but really like bring those feminine qualities that we have to the planet and to the earth so that we can bring it back to yeah harmony and balance and beauty. And... Yeah, women have been so conditioned to disconnect from their power, from their truth, from their authenticity, from using their voice, from being expressed, from being in their sensuality. And it's been, you know, maybe let's say 10,000 years of patriarchy or whatever. That's really like, it's, it's, this is our wisdom mm -hmm. and this is our power. It's, it's in our bodies. And sexuality is a part of that. Like we are sexual beings, but it's, way beyond the bedroom it's um it's in all of the little moments of yeah also of choosing ourselves like mm -hmm. choosing our truth and honoring ourselves so that we are resourced that we are in our power that we can then use our voice and go out and do these amazing things in the world yeah because we're so programmed to <coughs> show up for every single person around us except for ourselves yeah a good woman puts everyone else first mm -hmm. a good woman bypasses all of her own needs and yeah. I love how you say good woman. <laughs> good woman. <laughs> this is what they say, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you know, if you want to be recognized. Sounds well, like a oh, she's such man. a good woman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, oh. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. <laughs> I just had never heard it put like that before. Good woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I really love what you just said. Cause mm. I feel the shift in myself. And also, you know, you and I were talking about this too the other day. Like, because I, I was like, I, I feel like there's so much more impact I could be making. And you were like, you know, just by us embodying mm. an empowered woman and embodying who we are and being in touch with ourselves, connected to source, like we already are making all the impact mm -hmm. because the people around us, whether they talk to us or not, they feel the energy. And then like people in the community, they see it, you know, even if they never say it to us. Mm -hmm. Because you were saying that people have reached out to you and said just like who you are in the community and what you do is mm -hmm. really powerful for mm -hmm. them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we, you know, we, we're animals that model off each other. Like mm -hmm. we learnt so much of our behaviours and what we should or shouldn't do from mm -hmm. our parents and our grandparents and our communities. Um, and I think us just being in our power, it's, yeah, it's like, it's a permission slip and it's a, you know... Um, yeah, women can when they when they see many women on the island, they hear we also are so lucky that we live in one of the safest places in the world mm -hmm. to be able to express ourselves fully and be in our bodies and not feel an external threat because of that. 
Um, there are still some that exist, but compared to most places on the planet where it is one of the safest places i've ever felt yeah, yeah yeah and that's why women really feel that this is a place where women come and have these massive transformations other people men do as well but yeah this feeling of being safe as a woman as a as a sensual woman as a woman that wants to dress sexy as a woman that wants to be whoever she wants to be mm -hmm. it's it's a safe place to do that and yeah lots of women that arrive here see this in other women and are like wow I see how they feel. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to feel like that. That's what I want. It. That's what I want to get to. I remember this. It's so funny you say that because unlocked a memory of me. When I first got to the islands. I'd lived in Thailand for four years, but like I didn't live on the islands here, you know. And I'd been to Bali, but Bali is not Koh Phangan. And seeing these girls on their scooters, like you know, their cool PCXs with their headphones and their sunglasses, and they're just vibing, you know. And I'm like. <gasps> I want to be like that. <laughs> and now I am that girl. <laughs> <laughs> just like, get out of my way. I got to scoot, scoot. <laughs> it's going to change my little yeah. seat here. For Whatever you need to feel more comfortable. Do you want a pillow? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I'm just sitting up a bit. I know these beanbags. We're sitting on beanbags if you're mm. not watching visually. And it's a little... You start like sliding down into the floor. <laughs> 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 One day we're going to be a blob on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> In about 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. um, is there anything alive in you that you feel like you are like wanting to broadcast to? Like if you were speaking to, there's a lot of women who listen to my podcast. There's also men, which I love that everyone listens to it. I'm just like, for the women that are listening that maybe we're in your shoes. I have a lot of women who are like still in like corporate jobs and mm -hmm. they are wanting to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. <laughs> um, because there is a ton of uncertainty when we shifted, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like we just popped onto the Island and lived these magical lives. Um, but what helped you to get through all of that? Like what was your motivation and what helped you to make the shift from I call it the old world <laughs> into this new vibration that we are building and mm. co-creating here. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, I remember the moment that I realized I made the decision that I was going to leave it all. Um, I was actually on a yoga retreat at Christmas. So it's, I think, like almost exactly six years ago mm -hmm. when I was already so stressed about the year that was coming. I couldn't even switch off and enjoy and relax this yoga retreat. And I was there with a small group of other women. And like, I just, there was just something in me that just, it just clicked. I was like, I'm so unhappy. Aww. Like I'm on paper, I've, I'm successful. I'm like running the biggest accounts in UK. I'm winning all these big awards. I like had a big team of, you know, I don't know, 50 people. I was like, had everything that I'd been working towards mm -hmm. was like sort of there. Um, and I was like, and I'm just deeply unhappy. Like I'm stressed all the time. I'm basically a functioning alcoholic, smoking cigarettes, like um, just unhealthy, unhappy. And even looking at my bosses, I was like, oh, I don't want their jobs either. Like mm -hmm. canceling family holidays, not making it to the kids' birthday parties. Um and yeah I'd been single forever literally for most of my 20s and half of my 30s and it just it hit me like really like a light bulb of just like this is not working for me like mm. I'm, I'm just unhappy and I went back to um yeah the work the first Monday or first day back in in January and I said to them I don't know what my plan is but I won't be here by the end of the year. So you need to figure stuff out because I was part of a transition plan succession plan for different things so um yeah it was just this like deep knowing in my body actually a few weeks after that my body started to shut down and mm. it was like as soon as my mind had made the decision my body was like oh thank you finally mm. like you're listening to me and I was like having full-blown panic attacks as I was walking towards the office as soon as I'd get like even a block away from the office I'd be crying uncontrollably my body would just not be yeah it was like no <laughs> done no more so yeah for me it was like the question was um like what do i want from this life <laughs> there's got to be more i know mm -hmm. that question like is a, happens for a lot of people and a lot of the clients that i've worked with they're like i just know there's got to be more than this right mm -hmm. um 
And so the, uh, the first thing was like, I wanted to follow my health. Like what's going to make me feel healthy as like taking care of this body and all of the different things. Like I just want to feel healthy and then I want to seek some answers. So yeah, I did the kind of cliche of dropping myself in India and following the spiritual path. And yeah, as soon as I think one of the biggest things was connecting to something bigger than me Mm -hmm. when I had my spiritual awakening Sometimes I shy away from that word, but it's what it was. It was like mm-hmm. a, a a real like connection to something more powerful and something bigger than me. Um, and yeah, I just f- I followed the breadcrumbs. Like uh, this is also what I say to to clients that I work with. I work with a lot of women that want to break out of mm-hmm. the old world, and I'm like. We don't need to have all of the answers. We don't need to know, oh, this is my new purpose. This is the thing that I'm going to do. I need to know what it is before I go. It's almost like just taking the steps and following the breadcrumbs and things start to, you're listening then to this intuition and seeing what the universe wants to give you and bring you and where she's Mm -hmm. guiding you and following that guidance. And yeah, it's it's really um, been my path was just following the breadcrumbs and, and following my joy Um, not having a five-year plan (laughs) did not have a five-year plan do not have a (laughs) five-year plan (laughs) that's really beautiful yeah thank you for sharing i have a similar story i don't talk about it much but like i really i had um shingles i got shingles my Mm. which is like a very bad um painful thing that happens and it's from stress and the doctor told me you are 23, 24 years old. Like you, sh- I only see this in like cancer patients. Like you should, you need to change something in your life. And I was like, I'm done. I'm mm-hmm. done with this. Like working in a corporate law firm in New York City. Like mm-hmm. I need to get out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so yeah. I remember. And then I went on a. I already had plans a holiday to Greece uh, for two weeks. Like using my two weeks of the year holiday. You know, <laughs> that's all you get. <laughs> and yeah, the U.S. Yeah, the U.S. is so bad. Wow. Um, and I went there and, um, I had been taking morphine pills just cause I had to keep working mm-hmm. up until the holiday. And I went on the holiday. I didn't need the painkillers anymore mm. because it was all psychosomatic. It was mm-hmm. all like stress related to the situation, you know, totally. my body was like, hello, wake up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I ended up getting out like a month or two later, <laughs> getting out. It's like we were in prison or something. <laughs> it's how it felt. I actually <laughs> call myself a corporate escapee. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is, uh, but this is so important that the body, like the sickness, I had eczema all mm, on my body mm. as well. And I actually across my eyes would be like flaking. I'd be in meetings and having like this flaking oh skin o- over the, my eyelids. And it's like, this is the body's expression of you are not in alignment. Yeah. You something are is not, wrong. Yeah. This is not working. Yeah. And it's, it's so many of us are slapping steroid cream on our bodies to like cover it up, cover it up. And then it comes back, keep covering it up. Like, and doing these things to try and like uh, fix the problem, but mm-hmm. the problem is, it's it's the body just saying you this is this is not you're not in alignment. Yeah, something needs to change. Something needs to change. Yeah, and I think that is like the major thing in all of this is reconnecting with our bodies and trusting our bodies. Mm-hmm. I guess um, I like to say a lot of my podcasts like we are programmed to believe that like all this stuff needs to happen from mental space when really our experience in this physical reality is somatic it's the sensations happening in our bodies and our mental space is like our our physical mind is to keep us alive and to process the sensations happening in our bodies and as women we are so powerful because we are we like give birth and so we are like naturally way way connected to the sensations happening in our bodies and also the world and the collective and you know like all the things and there's so many women when i was doing um women's circles in berlin there's so many women that are like this is the first time i've ever allowed myself to really cry like this mm-hmm. like they're literally like sometimes it was the first time they've cried mm-hmm. you know like like yeah maybe they cried when they were a kid because they fell but like emotionally allowing themselves to feel mm-hmm. And I was just like, wow, when when did it stop being safe to feel? Mm-hmm. And then I think like as a collective, like as a whole human race, there has been like this feeling of like it's just not safe to feel anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, desensitization mm-hmm. and then the media 
confirms that by putting so much fear into the vortex that you don't want to feel anything anymore because if you did open it up, it would just be so overwhelming, yeah. you know? And that's why I feel like so many people um, come to Copanyong because it's like, oh, wow, it's safe to feel here, mm. you know? Like, and then there is some ungroundedness in that because people come here and they're like, wah! They like open the can of worms, as they say in English. It's like just burst everything mm. out. And that's why I love that we have our, you know, soul family here who have been on the island for years and we're like grounded. We're like, okay, come. Like mm. we will host you. We yeah. will hold you. Like we'll, we are grounded enough to be the safe space so that people can <sighs> process it. It's mm -hmm. just energy that needs mm -hmm. to go through the mm -hmm. body, you know. Totally. That's why I love that you're, um, everything you're doing at the Jade Temple now and like, just who you are just love who mm. you are i love you too queen <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, i just want to like yeah. speak to the this this is like yeah this body wisdom like i mm -hmm. i when i'm doing my classes i'm often guiding women to say saying like our body is speaking to us all day every day constantly through the language of sensation mm -hmm. and we are switching off from this wisdom which is so much deeper than anything that's in our minds, mm -hmm. any knowledge we can attain, any books that we can read, any courses that we can do. It's like the wisdom of the body. Like you said, it can create life. Like yeah, it's exactly. the body knows what it's doing. <laughs> we need to get out of the way or start mm -hmm. listening to it. Um, and yeah, when we start to like drop into that in the body and we start to feel and we're not f afraid of these feelings and these sensations, then there's nothing to fear anymore. Like, bes of course, there's like external dangers, but like most of the fears that we all go around with is fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear, and these all these things are just feelings in the body. It's mm -hmm. just sensation, and so when we can learn to be in the discomfort of some of those sensations, and actually just like find peace in that and like go into them and allow them, then it this is what allows us to live so authentically and so big. If big is our authentic truth. Because what am I afraid of? Mm -hmm. Like the sensations in my body? No, I can feel them. I've like gone into the heartbreak and I've mm -hmm. gone in and I've worked and I've cried and I've sat with it and I've like found pleasure in it. And then, you know, any of these other fears that we create from the mind, they just become insignificant and they really allow us to live our dreams. Yeah. Yeah. That's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I love that you say that living big because I think for so many people there like we are meant to do really big things in the world like a lot of us are just in our internal reality it can just hit this overwhelm point of like like you were saying but a lot of it is not like you're not gonna die if you try and do something yeah. that is your dream yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know totally putting yourself like i mean the process that i've been with like sharing things on instagram and like videos and doing this like it can feel like you're about to die but mm -hmm. The worst thing is that someone judges you mm -hmm. or sends you a message. You know, I get can get things and people can maybe get upset or offended. But like, you know, as long as you're not hurting anyone else. Um, yeah. The, but the feeling of doing some of this stuff, it does. It feels to the nervous system. It feels like death. But mm -hmm. as we become more and more able to regulate ourselves firstly so it doesn't feel like death and then just not be afraid of the judgments or the thoughts of other people, which is what is such a big block for mm. most people to live big, live what they actually want to be living. Yeah, it becomes, a, it's it's more of a game. Yeah. Like <laughs> That's why I, I love to say that life is a game, you know. Yeah. But also, I think there, this is also why I always say, like, it is important to have people around you when you, like you were saying, like, self-regulation. So that's like you're able to calm your own nervous mm -hmm. system. But when you're going on doing big things, like, like, sometimes a lot of times you need people around you that to remind you of your power and what they call co-regulation so like i you are going to go do something big that makes you feel this internal fear i'm going to be a calm nervous system and remind you of your power and like you can like co-regulate by like coming into my energy field everything's great you're safe everything's okay and then you can be like oh okay i can do it you know and this is so beautiful totally. you know like this mm -hmm. is like what tribe is for in action yeah yeah um, yeah. For sure. And this is like, this is the biggest thing, like co-regulation. It's something that we should have learned and experienced when we were kids up until the age of seven. Mm -hmm. You know, our parents were meant to be helping us co-regulate and then we could learn to regulate ourselves. But most of us didn't have regulated parents that could do that for us. 
and therefore we didn't learn so much around self-regulation. But yeah, when we can actually like use our nervous systems as a support network, wow, this is yeah. really the magic. And this is what like actually my job is more than anything in this is why like my, the most important thing that I need to do in the space holding that I do is keep myself, do my practices, do the things that I know, keep me regulated because my number one thing is for holding that space is so that other women that come into my space, they can like regulate with my nervous system yeah. more than anything that comes out of my mouth or anything clever that yeah. I might say. It's this nervous system co-regulation. And so yeah. like vibrationally, you have a calm nervous system and then everyone else, doesn't matter what you say consciously, they can just feel energetically your calm nervous system and then they can mirror that. This is what babies do, like when mm -hmm. they put them on their mom's chest and they're, they're crying, it's like they, they feel the heartbeat of the mom Yeah, and then they're able to match that heartbeat. So like vibrationally, this is what... Exactly. Doing it's called you. limbic resonance. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's this, this, our nervous systems are all kind of resonating with each other mm -hmm. and we can either be resonating down towards each other like actually one person can be dysregulated this is what often what happens in relationships one person gets triggered and their nervous system then the other person matches it and then they end up in some kind of disagreement or argument but if we can like really be working with our nervous system so that when our partner or a friend or someone in our spaces they're dysregulated we actually bring them up or down <laughs> whatever the word would mm -hmm. be into regulation into more of a calm state so that we can be m helping them come out of that dysregulation mm -hmm. and it's happening all the time whether we're conscious of it or not and yeah and this is something i'm like really grateful to you for that you mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're keep sliding down <laughs> you're watching lower visually lower. i keep pushing the <laughs> camera down we <laughs> keep going lower wait till the end <laughs> 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 this is something I'm really I really am grateful to you is like I also um mimic how you are very good at calling out when you're triggered mm. or like when you have something moving in your body mm -hmm. that you need to speak like I've had so many moments with you where you're like mm, something's coming up for me right now like I just need to pause our conversation and sit with it and I'm like oh Ooh, what's going on <laughs> 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 and now I'm just like oh yeah now I started doing it with Faraday mm -hmm. where I'm like I'm feeling really triggered right now and and like getting curious about it mm -hmm. instead of going straight into the trigger, which ends up being me just being very defensive and not owning that I, hey, something's like hurting right now or like mm -hmm. something doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. And I started to do that with him and it's been so helpful for mm -hmm. us. Like he's like, actually, yeah, I noticed an energy shift in you, but I didn't know what it was and this and that. And I'm like, now I'm getting, I'm like, training myself and now I'm like can you help me I'm asking him like can you if you do sense it just can you call me out on it like hey I noticed you're getting triggered mm -hmm. and this is something our god my godfather Richard is saying to us like make it a game like whoever gets triggered first like who can be the first one to call it out you know so that you can not go deeper into the dysregulation of the ner like basically not an like I have not a not nice or on my nervous system is not calm so I'm triggered and then now your nervous system is not calm and now we're just fighting yay <laughs> <laughs> so it's like who can call it out first and make mm -hmm. a joke about it like he was like make it fun like mm -hmm. th this is what we're relationships should be fun even mm -hmm. when you're figuring it out and like you don't have all the answers for sure yeah and generally the like number one thing we can do for each other is say let's take a breath yeah <sighs> <laughs> it's like literally the number one and you know even in love making like if i feel you know it can be like you feel someone lacking presence or mm -hmm. if some yeah you, we sense each other so much more than we think we do and if you can just sense something's off like let's just pause let's mm -hmm. just take a breath together and uh, usually at least 50% of whatever's going on is, is already reduced, you know. Yeah, and I found it's so powerful to speak it out loud. Mm -hmm. Because so many people are like, oh, that's awkward. I don't want to be the one. And they just kind of like run over the awkwardness of, mm -hmm. you know, like, but then, it, but then everyone's just not feeling good in their bodies. Mm -hmm. And I'm always like, yeah, I've I've been doing this so much this year. I've just like... Yeah, something feels off right now. I want to talk to you about it. And, and I don't, uh, maybe I don't know what it is. I, a lot of times I don't know what it's off. I just feel something's off and just really, and I'll say, 
this is not an intellectual thing. This is like an uh, intuition thing. I'm feeling this in my body. Mm -hmm. And giving that a lot more weight because mm -hmm. we are so programmed as a society that it has to logically make sense in order for me to bring it up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's not valid. Mm -hmm. And coming from a legal background, like mm -hmm. this was very imprinted in me. Like there needs to be evidence in order for me. And so like a lot of times in my if I'm fighting with someone or I'm like triggered and I'm trying to defend myself, I would go into this very mental, this thing happened in this and then, and so therefore you're wrong. Instead of just being like, something feels off in my body and I just, can we please work this out? Because I, w I love you and I want to feel good together, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's not even anything to work out. Like it can just be like, yeah, just let's just pause and breathe. And just speaking it out is the thing that releases that energy, that mm -hmm. moves the energy, the stuckness. And sometimes I it's like sometimes I think we don't just need to get into the story just feel mm. be with the sensation what is the sensation not the story behind it and sometimes that's enough just for it to actually clear and heal mm. in the system and do you mean by actually like if there's something in a certain part of your body or you just mean like breathing uh, I mean, if there's a specific sense, I mean, both, yeah. of course, like just a breath. And, and I mean, I have a mantra at the moment even, which is just soften, soften, release, mm. let it go, let it go. But if there's some part that we feel activated, like if this doesn't feel good in my body, okay, where in your body and actually go to that sensation, be with that sensation. What can I feel? I can feel like a tightness in my chest or a tingling in my throat, my eyelids flickering or whatever mm -hmm. the thing is and just be with that sensation and often just this being with this sensation. I mean, I love, I love as a tool when I'm with these sensations to say to my body, I hear you mm. to the sensation and actually it, it allows the body to feel heard and that can often just like... <sighs> It actually, the body wants to be heard. And if, if, we d if we ignore it, the sensations become more and it becomes more and more overwhelming. But sometimes we just acknowledge it and it can dissipate. Mm. Mm. Wow, that's really beautiful. Mm. I have a lot of people that tell me you know, that in the podcast, <coughs> in my podcast, I usually say at some point, I try and do it in the beginning, if, <laughs> if I remember, like let's take a deep breath together mm. and this kind of became my thing that people know me for and like I have a lot of people say I love breathing with you on my podcast mm. like sometimes I listen to it when I'm on my way to work when I first get to work and it's just my moment to like check in with myself because mm -hmm. I'm always like notice any sensations that are happening do you want to do it with me of course <laughs> <laughs> and I have also done it with you listening to your podcast <laughs> of course I love that <laughs> <laughs> I don't assume that any of my friends listen to my podcast. Yeah, so yeah, I love oh that you yeah. actually listen. Because, like, you know, we're always, uh, we are creators in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been shaking things. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, okay. So if you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. I invite you, and you're feeling safe to do so, I invite you to close your eyes and just notice how you feel in your body right now. Mm -hmm. Notice the sensations that are coming up. And when you're ready, I invite you to take a deep breath with me. And when you take the breath in, to expand your stomach out. So, like, put it out as much as you can as if you're pregnant. So, breathe in. And then have the air go all the way up through the top of your head. And imagine it going straight into the top of the universe. And then breathe out. <sighs> and when you breathe in again, you can even imagine, like, this golden warm energy starting in your belly and going all the way through your chest through the top of your head all the way to source god universe whatever you want to call it so breathe in all the way up and breathe out. and notice how you feel in your body right now And I offer, or however you're feeling right now, just see if you can soften the jaw, soften the belly, let the belly be soft and full, and soften the whole pelvic floor. <sighs> and with every exhale, just checking those three points 
jaw, belly, pelvic floor. Mm. <laughs> how are Yummy. You how are you? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Yummy. How are Always you feeling? Mm. In yeah. your body. Uh, yeah, soft and juicy. Mm. And yeah. And I, yeah, I, I mean, I literally do this many, many, many times throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's, there's so many little signals that we're giving to our body as we do this. To It's signaling to the body that we are safe. So it creates a sense of safety. Even uh, uh, like softening the jaw when we're tense and, and we tense the jaw. So w- when we don't feel safe, we tense the jaw. So softening the jaw, it's already signaling to the body I'm safe. Mm. Letting the belly hang out. Like as women, we've actually been trained to suck in our bellies and we don't even know we're unconsciously doing it most of the day. I'm still unconsciously doing it after years of mm. soften, soften, soften. And the pelvic floor, again, is a place we all carry so much tension, men and women. So, whew, yeah, I do this as many times as I can in a day. That's amazing. Mm. I love that. Mm. I feel very, like, complete right now. Do you? Is there anything else you want to share with the world <laughs> while we're here? World. <laughs> All the Just amazing that people. you are perfect exactly as you are. Mm. It's not, this work is not about fixing you. It's just about bringing you closer and closer to yourself and giving you permission to feel mm. all of your feelings and to be able to tap into the wisdom of your body so you can be more authentic and honor yourself and and then own your your pleasure and your excitement and your joy and no one is broken the system is broken there is a lot that needs to be fixed in the system but it's th- it's already all within you like there's nothing new it's just about coming back to the wisdom and the tools that we were naturally born with and got trained and programmed out of us or conditioned out of us so yeah if you're not feeling in your power just find people who are and and come together we do this together this is not this is not solo work this is not work we do sitting on our own and there are so many people on the planet right now doing such beautiful work that have incredible hearts and incredible generosity and we want to hold each other and walk each other home mm. and yeah, don't do it alone. Find community. Find spaces where you feel safe and and just know that you are welcome exactly as you are. Mm. It's like mic drop. That was amazing. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> snap, 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 snap. <laughs> How can people find <laughs> you? Yay. So you can find me, best place is Instagram, mm-hmm. Tamara Klemick, Tamara dot Klemick, which is K-L-E-M-I-C-H. I'll put it in the show notes so cool. people can... Jade te- the Jade Temple, mm. which is here on Copenhagen. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we actually, we're about to launch in the new year an online membership. So if oh people yeah. can't come to the yeah. island, we're going to have a beautiful, beautiful sisterhood. This is like mm. um, my partner and I, Hillary. Shout out to Hillary. I love you so much. Um, we're creating, yeah, an online membership where we'll have weekly classes. We'll have Telegram group. We're going to have like lots and lots of community building for sisters wherever they are in the world mm. to be able to access this work and find each other so that we can all be yeah in community together and supporting each other through this beautiful beautiful work so i love it really excited for that and yeah i just want to say that i'm really proud of you mm. like celebrating who you are and all the things you're doing in the world like Thank you're a powerful you, woman <laughs> <laughs> every time <laughs> she comes over and fairy talks her he's like she's so powerful <laughs> he loves you. <laughs> I love him and I love, love, love you, Queen. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be doing life with you. Yeah, you too, babe. Mm. 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 <laughs> and with that, we will sign off before we come completely to the floor <laughs> in our bean bags. <laughs> I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Be your beautiful, authentic self. You're doing amazing. Keep shining. Shine, shine, shine. Mm.